On the 5th of March 1937, Imperial Airways opened the Hive Flying Boat Base on Southampton Water for operation of its Empire services. From that date, European flights operated from Croydon and all Imperial Airways intercontinental flights from Hive and the terminal at Southampton. This was the base for the four engine flying boats from Short Brothers, which were to become known as the C Class Empire boats. It is these flying boats with which Hive is most associated, and it would come as perhaps a shock to some to discover that this location was not Imperial Airways' first choice. The decision to move to Hive was not taken for any regard for the Admiralty Shed, first used to house flying boats in World War I, or the former occupant, Vickers Supermarine. Instead, the location was chosen for hard-headed political and economic reasons involved with the new Empire Airmail scheme. It was Langston Harbour to the east of Portsmouth that was to be the Empire Airmail scheme base, but the Air Ministry declined to contribute more than 40% of the cost, and as Portsmouth City Council decided it could not afford to invest more than its original share or develop the base alone, the matter was dropped. The use of Southampton Water as a flying boat base was then discussed with the Air Ministry and the Southampton Harbour Board in August 1936 and its use sanctioned. An area of Southampton Water, one mile long by 400 yards wide, off the Royal Victoria Hospital, was declared to be the Empire Air Scheme Terminal. Mooring trucks were established to the east of the Netley Boy on the north side of the main shipping channel. Notwithstanding the marked terminal area, the boats usually took off in daylight when and where they liked. This caused some dismay and consternation to the pilots and masters of the ocean-going liners and other shipping plying the water, who considered the flying boats to be trespassing on their exclusive domain. Until the introduction of the Empire flying boats, Imperial Airways was operating routes conventionally with a combination of land-based and flying boat craft from Croydon, London. In fact, Imperial Airways already ordered land-based aircraft before winning the Empire Air Mail scheme contract, but changed to flying boats because it was thought that the cost of expanding airfields throughout the Empire would be too great and the price of fuel would be lower along the coastline in comparison with inland airfields. Therefore, it was considered more cost-effective to invest from the drawing board in 31 large four-engine flying boats with greater cargo space from Short Brothers at Rochester in Kent, and all the mainline Empire routes were eventually operated by these C-class flying boats. The impetus of these great changes at Imperial Airways was the government introduction of an unsurcharged, that is without any additional charge to the airmail postage, known as the Empire Airmail Scheme. Today, social media plays a significant role in most people's lives. But in the days before the internet, writing letters was about the only way most people could keep in touch around the world. On the 8th of December 1934, the UK to Australia mail service opened, operated by Imperial Airways from Croydon to Karachi, Indian Transcontinental Airways from Karachi to Singapore, and Qantas from Singapore to Brisbane. On the 13th of April 1935, Imperial Airways and Qantas Empire Airways opened the 12,754-mile London to Brisbane route for passengers for a single fare of £195. This was a weekly flight with a journey time of 12 and a half days. It was on the 2nd of July 1936 that Canopus was the first of Imperial Airways fleet of Empire flying boats launched on the Medway at Rochester and in October made the first scheduled flight from Alexandria to Brindisi by a C-class flying boat. In December, Imperial Airways Caledonia carried Christmas Mail 1,700 miles non-stop from Alexandria to Marseille in 11 and a quarter hours, and the following day flew Marseille to Southampton in 4 and a quarter hours. And on the 8th of February 1937, Imperial Airways began regular operations from Southampton to Alexandria with flying boat Castor.
On the 5th of March 1937, Imperial Airways opened the high flying boat base. The terminal was situated at berth 101 in the western docks using pontoons, but in 1938 a new terminal was opened at berth 108. On the 2nd of June 1937, the flying boat Canopus started the service to South Africa from Southampton with a return flight by flying boat Corsair, which left Durban on the 6th of June. These flying boats were capable of carrying a large volume of mail, whilst passengers were accommodated in luxurious cabins with a promenade area in which they could relax and gaze down at the passing scenery. In July, the first commercial survey flight across the North Atlantic commenced, operated by flying boat Caledonia, which also went on to make the first survey flight from Southampton to the Azores. On the 23rd of February 37, the Empire Airmail scheme was extended to Egypt, Palestine, India, Burma, Ceylon and Malaya, with the first mail leaving Southampton on Centurius and Qantas Kulingata. Finally, on the 28th of July, the Empire Airmail program was again extended to Australia this time, with New Zealand, Tasmania, Fiji, Papau and other local points. Sir Kingsley hands to the Postmaster General, Major Tryon, letters from His Majesty the King to be sent on the first flight of the new air mail service to Australia. Under the new scheme, letters are to be sent by air without extra charge. With the first mail leaving Southampton on flying boat Calypso. From the same day, Qantas Empire Airways flying boats began operating the whole route from Sydney to Southampton, with the Qantas crews only working between Sydney and Singapore. Mighty engines beating out a new song. Britannia rules the air. Greater distances brought their own problems for the flying boats. On the 20th of January 1938, the first flight refueling test was completed by flying boat Cambria under the direction of Sir Alan Cobham. And on the 6th of February, the first separation test of the short Mayer composite aircraft took place. At this time, there were eight services weekly from the UK to Egypt, three to Central Africa, two to South Africa, five to India, and three to Australia. However, the British government announced its intention to merge Imperial Airways and British Airways Limited to form a single chosen instrument, British Overseas Airways Corporation, BOAC, and the necessary bill received royal assent on the 4th of August, 1939 just prior to the commencement of World War II. Nevertheless, the short S-30C class flying boats still continue to operate, flying to India and Karachi. From the 5th of August 1939, the first regular weekly experimental return commercial airmail Southampton to New York transatlantic flights began using two modified C-class flying boats, Cabot and Caribou, which refueled in flight. On the 3rd of September 39, following the formal declaration of war, the head offices of Imperial Airways, British Airways Limited, and the Civil Aviation Department of the Air Ministry were evacuated to Bristol. The airline's land planes were moved from Croydon and Heston to Whitchurch, and Imperial Airways flying boats from Hythe to Poole in Dorset. And the 30th of September saw Imperial Airways flying boat Cabba arrive at Poole, completing the 1939 North Atlantic program. On the 24th of November 1939, British Overseas Airways Corporation was established under the BOAC Act and Imperial Airways was no more.